Former President Donald Trump facing, uh, what, 33 different charges in New York related to the alleged hush money payment he made allegedly to a porn actress. Uh, People saying that that uh, violated campaign finance because he did it to change the outcome of the 2016 election. Um, So he faces that. He also faces charges uh, down uh, in in Georgia, potentially. We have yet to see that uh, actually surface to the top. But uh, several other things, including uh, allegations of uh, being in a hold of uh, classified materials in his his home residence. So uh, he's got a lot of things facing him. Uh, And uh, of course, last week was a big week with his arraignment in New York courts, but he sat down last night for an interview with uh, Tucker Carlson. We'll air some of those clips, but just to contrast it with uh, all the questions that aren't being posed to the current president, Joe Biden, from earlier this week, Kareem Jean-Pierre, the White House spokesperson, uh, being asked about when is the press going to be able to actually ask the president some important questions and the lack of press conference that we see in general from this white house i represent a news organization that owns 113 television stations and a question that i'm often asked and i don't know the answer to so i'll ask you that question uh is the administration trying to protect the president from our questions uh please I answer absolutely that question. not Absolutely not. So why the lack of any interaction in a formal setting to have a press conference? Uh, I mean, the president takes shouted questions. I I understand, John. I understand. I understand. I have dealt with this question about three times already. I understand. It is. It is. It is uh, the job of you all to ask this question to me. Totally get that, and that's not a problem at all. Um, but c- certainly, uh, the president many times has. Has, stand, has stood in front of all of you, has taken questions uh, on his own because he wanted uh, to see what was all on your minds. He wanted to see what the questions you all were going to ask him, and he wanted to answer them directly. That has happened multiple times, many times, uh, during this administration, and that will certainly continue uh, to be. When it comes to a formal press conference, I don't have anything to share with you at this time. And she went on to say something to the effect of uh, he's taking more questions uh, than, than other presidents, and I don't know if that's the case. I mean, you're going to have to do an actual fact check on all that uh, just to see exactly where they're at. Uh, but... A sit-down was conducted by Tucker Carlson and former President Donald Trump. Uh, and a couple of different previews that uh, Tucker Carlson put out uh, before it aired last night, and apparently round two is going to be tonight, uh, here's some of what uh, they, they previewed heading into the airing of that interview. Last week you were in New York for this arraignment. The world watched it. You have not given an interview since. You were there, I think, 57 minutes. Tell us from your perspective perspective what that was like. They were incredible. When I went to the courthouse, which is also a prison in a sense, uh, they signed me in. And I'll tell you, people were crying. People that work there, professionally work there, that have no problems putting in murderers and they see everybody. It's tough, tough place. And they were crying. They were actually crying. They said, I'm sorry. So the uh, former president uh, making the statements that those who helped process him uh, felt that it was unjust and thereby crying. Uh, But also uh, the president was asked about the current president. Uh, Is he fit to run for office? Uh, And will he make it through a 2024 presidential campaign? Here's how that went. Look. Uh, I I watch him just like you do. And I think it's almost inappropriate for me to say it. I don't see how it's possible. But there's something wrong. I saw his answer today on television about whether or not he was going to run to a very nice guy named Al Roker. I mean, you can't get a softer question than that. That was a long answer of talking about the eggs and this and that. Look, I don't think he can and, uh, the former, the Fox- and the former president uh, talked about how, uh, you know, if, it's not an age issue. He said he's got friends that are uh, 89, 90 years old and they're sharp as a tack and they can still, you know, just think strategically and whatnot. He says it's not an age issue. He just feels that Biden doesn't have the mental faculties to actually run a campaign. Uh, Here's former President Trump uh, being described as moderate when a lot of people said, oh, Trump's crazy. He's a madman. He's bad for foreign policy because he's so unpredictable. But Tucker's assessment's a bit different. 
We traveled to Mar-a-Lago today to interview the former president on his recent arrest by a Democratic prosecutor. But once we sat down, we wound up talking mostly about foreign policy. For a man who is caricatured as an extremist, we think you'll find what he has to say moderate, sensible, and wise. When we come back, Donald Trump's greatest fear for America. Something- and uh, that greatest fear is something that a lot of people point to, and it's this question of uh, what is the greatest threat for America? Here is uh, that question being answered uh, by the former president last night on Tucker Carlson, uh, where he uh, talks about it's not uh, a threat from outside the country he fears the most. Who's the biggest problem, sir? Is it China? Could it be Russia? Could it be North Korea? No, I said the biggest problem is from within. It's these sick, radical people from within because we can handle if we're smart we can handle russia china i did so who's the biggest uh, the the president saying that uh, the biggest threat to the country is going to come from within within the country uh that's uh, pretty interesting to, to hear the former president spell that out uh but he was also asked about the nord stream pipeline and uh, Tucker asking him about, uh, hey, uh, so who who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Here is uh, former President Donald Trump's response to that. Who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Um, I don't want to get our country in trouble, so I won't answer it. But uh, I can tell you who it wasn't was Russia. Yeah. How about when they blamed Russia? You know, they said Russia blew up their own pipeline. You got a kick out of that one, too. Well, uh, again, uh, the, the former president's not necessarily saying who blew it up, but saying who didn't blow it up. And when it comes to Afghanistan, uh, the withdrawal out of Afghanistan, here is the former president, um, well, um, disparaging a, uh, a military leader. Tents are very hard to take out. I said, I want the tents. I want the tanks. I want the planes. I want everything. And a couple of them fought me on it. Like Millie, he said, sir, I think it's cheaper to leave the equipment behind. I said, let me ask you, we have a plane that costs $100 million. It's sitting there. All it needs is a tank of gas, right? Give me a little jet fuel. We'll fly it to Pakistan or any place else, or we'll fly it directly home. You say it's cheaper to leave a $100 million plane? Sir, I think overall it's cheaper. These are idiots we're dealing with. So uh, the former president... Uh, characterizing some of the military leadership as, quote, idiots. Uh, so that's just a kind of a, a brief snippet of some of what the former president had to say sitting down with Tucker Carlson last night. Apparently, Tucker Carlson is going to air uh, the the second installment of that sit-down interview with uh, former President Trump uh, that was conducted earlier this week. Uh, so we'll see what uh, ultimately comes out of all 